Hey everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of Tartlecast. Um, we want to talk about the economics of the system, or in Greek terms, it's oeconomikos, before the French actually um, destroyed the well, world. Well, we're using big words here. Yeah. But um, I was just about to touch to on a story with Jason. We're going through the hiring process right now of building out our team for Tartle um, here in the U.S. And uh, we got this guy that came on this morning, and we're doing the interviews. And we have a lot of people. We screen tons of right. people, right? A lot of people applying. And there's a lot of quality people that have the, when I say quality, they have the ability to do the job. They have the experience. Right. But what you're looking for are people with passion and purpose and creativity that actually believe in what they're doing because that's what really shines through. Right. So we get on the call with this gentleman, uh, Danya and I. Danya's our uh, chief technology officer. And I was like, okay, I like kicking him off saying I, I want to do a little bit of show and tell. And the reason I do that is because it helps me understand from your perspective how you see Tartle in your eyes and how you kind of, you know, facilitate its gears in your mind, right? So I was like, why don't you relay to me your understanding? So this guy gets on, he's already late, and he's like, uh, he's, I don't know anything about it. And I'm watching him type up on the keyboard because it's a video interview. I'm like, okay. Um, I was like, well, can you, if you don't know much about it, can you tell me why you applied the position? And he said, uh, you know, I only did it, it's just, you know, I'm just, it's like a shotgun. I just took a shotgun approach out there. I'm like, great. <laughs> I'm like, uh, thanks a lot for the interview. And I said, best of luck with your shotgun. You know what I mean? And then I just ended the interview right there. Danya's like, holy shit. And I'm like, well, this is the type of filter we need to have because when you're looking to build a world-class team, tons of people with experience, but you got to find the people that really believe in it because that's yes. what pushes things over and above. Especially if you know that you're going to have an interview and you don't even want to research the company that you're having the interview. How did you feel like you were going to wing it? Yeah, how do you even just wing You just set like yourself that? up for failure. There's a lot of complexity with what we're doing and we have to make it simple for everybody else. Right. So you're just going to come in here and just like assume we're going to give away, you know, a large chunk of money to bring you on to the team like that. And there's and there's an, there's a certain intent and purpose to the philosophy of Tartle. Yes. In, in in exactly how you're trying to grow it. And that's Correct. something that we're going to talk about. But if, if it's not, he would be the type of person that would cookie cut something that may have worked at other tech companies and brought it in. And then you would have had this generic, you know, yucky flavored um, bad honey. Yeah, it's, like, it's a bad <laughs> honey, right? It's uh, the way I looked at it when you talk to a lot of candidates, you find that they'd look at the jobs as a commodity. Yes. I don't know if it's necessarily their fault. I think over time they've become desensitized to it. It's a lot to deal with how the market treats it and other, you know, tech companies or businesses that require people of that, you know, skill set. But that commoditized attitude is something that is albeit perturbing to us at Turtle. Yes. Yeah. We're not looking for people like that. And if you're a person that has the skill, reach out to us. And if you're a person that have the passion, hound us. But ima imagine if you have a team of people that are just looking for to work for a tech company that's cool and they and they want the bucks. Yeah. You know, and then you have a group of five in a team that's working for that. Or you have a group of five people that are passionate. They believe in exactly what Tartle's about. They believe in changing the world and changing humanity. And they look at it in that purpose. It's almost like you can tell the difference between a teacher that cares about the children and a teacher that's just there to read the syllabus. Right. Yeah. You remove the sex appeal. Yes. And it's like, let's talk about actually watering the roots here. Right. And if we brought that individual on, he'd just be like almost like poisoning the soil. Yes, exactly. And you can't have that sort of foundation, you know, um, culturally in the company. It's just like it, it would end up festering. Right. And Simon Sinek talks about that a lot, yeah. especially when, when you look at an organization and you see its, its final purpose and then how everyone is aligned to that purpose. And that is more important because you can teach skill. Skill can always be taught. Yes, exactly. But having everyone aligned with that purpose and moving in that direction, that is what. And speaking of moving in the direction, yeah. when we have users. When we have users on Turtle, right? And this, yes. So let's dive into the economics. <laughs> I just, we had to vent about that for a second because I, I want everyone to know because. And we don't have beers, guys. We have it's kombucha. kombucha right here. Dr. Brew. Yeah. I got some ginger lemon. What do you have? I got the super berry. Yeah, that used to be your dancing name back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Superberry. Oh, my gosh. But the um, what I'm saying is, you know, there's a sensitive information that comes into Turtle, right. okay? So I, I wanted to talk about that for a minute because it's twofold. I wanted to vent, and the other fact of it is, you know, we got to build trust here. 
So you you know we want people to feel comfortable <laughs> that we're we're bringing in the best super berries around. You know what I mean? I just picture you like on a pole dancing. <laughs> How tall are you? People six, people may not realize this. Yeah, because no, because we look normal because I, I'm kind of tall. We're both I'm like tall. six two six three. Yeah, if you'd stand and up then straight, you're you'd be yeah, six, yeah, yeah yeah exactly. I'd be taller than you if I had hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't have locks of love like you do. But I, it's, I lucked out with these green locks. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, so that's, that's a nice thing. <laughs> but uh, here I am. I have to shave because I'm. You're aerodynamic, though. It helps you. Yeah, run. it does. Yeah. We're totally <laughs> Just a big ape running. <laughs> 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 My run is most people's probably uh, slight jog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a homemade seismograph, and I know every time you're going out for a jog. <laughs> that works oh, perfect you ever every time. Did you feel that small tremor? <laughs> Must be Jason going out for a jog. Yep, yep, he's going out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the mailbox. <laughs> I open my little thing and then I jog away. Uh, it's funny. I always see you all the time, all the time there. A lot of people don't know this, but we live in the same yeah. place. So always crossing paths. Oh, always. Um, Never saw you have the balcony that one day that was funny. Yeah. So um, I had got some stuff uh, from Amazon or something. And then I hear I have headphones in all the time, so I can't hear. But then you start yelling like really loud. Screaming. <laughs> I have no problem screaming. And, and you're on like a, you're on a tall balcony, like yeah. a third story balcony yelling at me. And then I go and I'm just standing looking at you the whole time. We end up talking for like 45 minutes. Yeah, it's like when, my you know, neck the was pope, gone. You know, the pope comes out <laughs> yes. and he's on that balcony at the Vatican. It's the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have to kiss like, any hey, rings hey. though. Yeah, <laughs> that was nice. Okay, so more users. What does that mean for Turtle? Great. Yeah. So let's talk about the economics of that. Okay. Right. So more users. Ah, every tech company wants that. We more more people using the system. Well, that's not it. So the reason we talk about this is because if we're looking at how the economics are in play right now everybody's information is being managed by a very small number of companies. Right. It's not being managed by themselves because they're not on Tartle, obviously. So these companies have these black box um, pricing competitions between one another to recycle and sell this information that they have on you. And so what that happened over time, since they realized that there was value to data is they've squeezed their pricing models down because the, these, you know, a couple of majors have now put themselves, they've cornered themselves into their own market. And the, the pricing pressure has destroyed the value for the secondary and tertiary information because they have, they're have they essentially taking your borrowed information and making money off of it. You never collected any interest on no. it. No. So here's the thought then. So if they're controlling this information, well, and they've destroyed the pricing model, how is it that you can actually elevate that, that data to bring it back to its true value and worth? Well, what happens is when you start to take your data and you put it over in Turtle, whether you bank it or whatever you want to call it, you, you park it in Turtle itself, it's moving, it's taking it out of their pipe that all these other tech companies are managing and, you know, selling off your data without your consent. And it, moving it into this turtle marketplace puts it in this, you know, tight lockbox. So what's going to happen is their pricing models are going to disappear and they're going to be forced to then come in and purchase the data from you. So what that's going to do is that's actually going to elevate the pricing because the scarcity of that model is going to say that, oh, wait a minute. They can't get it anymore where they typically were from their own means. So they're going to come and have to per, you know, directly purchase it from you from, for the original price it was at before they squeezed it down in their own you know, black markets. Right. So when you're coming over to here to Turtle and you start to move your data off of those systems and put it into one you know, single unified encrypted place, it's going to elevate all the values of that data that you have. And it gives you the option to create more data that otherwise these companies didn't have the ability to create in the first place. So the value increases dramatically. And as more people come on, what happens is it, it has a bifurcating effect or a network effect. Um, it actually, it's, doing, it's bifurcating and networking at the same time because you can create more and more data. And also every single person that's on there, the data becomes relationship um, built. So if I'm buying data from one person with this source information in a data packet, I can compare it with all these other people here in these specific data packets. And then I have this you know, cross-examination or analysis of data that I otherwise wasn't able to get from these other companies. Because these companies are stuck with the data they have right. and trying to get it from a select few options. But now we have an infinite amount of data that we can sift through and purchase and analyze. So now this, va this data is increasing dramatically because of the combination of data that's actually happening. So it's every single person that comes in, the amount of relationships increase. So that factor of value is increasing proportionally with it. So what does that mean? So if, if, if you're a user of Tartle and you're selling your data yeah. and you're looking and saying, okay, I'm getting so much Bitcoin for these packets. What, what is the, so the price of that rises up. So you actually get more, you're going to get more, yeah. um, more Bitcoin for your data. That's correct. Because what happens is the, 
it'll become so scarce outside of the marketplace for that data that people are going to have to come in. So it's going to actually raise the value of it. So that means you should be like, tell your grandmother, tell your uncle, tell your sister, tell everybody in your local area to join Turtle because it increases everybody's value at the same time. Everyone needs to be on Turtle. Rather than feeling like a commodity outside of the system. Yeah, it's just, you're a non. Um, I mean, wh- what would you what would you call these large data companies? Um, I mean, they've been stealing data for so long. Where Tartle's looking at it as, as being this, you're not really an intermediary. What do, what, what would you call it? Like, would you say um, I'm I'm looking at that word that's like logical and moral at the same time? Yeah, we're not we're we're not a middleman, right? We're just an ethical equanimitous tool so yes. everything is in balance it's fair you know it's vi- it's it's very free market and it's extremely powerful and very sovereign for the individual right that's the best way i would describe it it's a very it's a sovereign tool right it's not a siloed black box it's black box market that all these other people are running and you that have very no, few have access to that yeah. very few have the key. Why don't, right. why doesn't everybody have their own key to their own information? Right. Exactly. hundred you know? percent. If I'm going to go sell a used car, you know, my car, right. I'm going to say how much I want to sell it for. Right. I'm going to look on Kelly blue book. Right. And I'll be like, okay, what's the price going? Okay. I, you know, I don't really take good care of myself. So my, you know, or the car or my medical data. So, you know, it's not going to be worth as much. So maybe I'm going to have to put a little bit under market price and that's what I'll accept, you know, the bids for as people come in to say, Oh, I want to purchase that. You're looking at the same function. You're the owner to it. You're the one that should decide that asset and what it's going to be left for because you have that perceived value. Right. Cause KBB, uh, before that, you never knew what your trade in was worth. No. So it could be worth 500 or 5,000. That's correct. And now we have the KBB for everything. Yes. And that's and, the cool part yeah. when, but if you go to a used car lot, they're putting you out of the game. Right, exactly. Why would I do that? I can go to a certified used car lot, even though the price has been squeezed down and they're competing and they don't make big margins off of it. Right. Or they may. I don't know what happens in used cars. Um, but it's it's the same sort of metaphor. Right. So why don't we get everybody just selling their own cars again, but in a really simplified, easy format for them to do so? I love that. That's cool. Yeah. And that's all I had to talk about that, No, that's perfect. I, I like it. Yeah, I mean, you need to get back to dancing, bro. Yeah, I got I to go <laughs> super bury it. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks. Cool deal.